happy Bad Batch Friday to every single one of you guys, and may the force be with us all as we are talking Season 1, Episode 6 of The Bad Batch in full spoiler detail, and what an episode this one was. An enjoyable episode that contains some nice little Easter eggs to the entire Star Wars universe, some familiar faces that I did not expect to have all show up in this show at all, but it made sense overall, but... Overall, a fun episode again, and exactly doubling down on what the Bad Batch is, exploring the universe, touching on pockets of where the Clone Wars was. In a sense, this is kind of an epilogue to Clone Wars, as well as a prologue or in general, a prequel to Star Wars Rebels and the original trilogy. And I'm digging it for the most part. You know, I, I take the Star Wars content as it comes in, as long as it's good. I'm going to be there, and if you guys are also going to be there, and you guys want a place to come talk Bad Batch every week, well, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button right down there. That way we can keep talking Bad Batch every single week, and just in general, you can be a geek with me over here. Also, guys, make sure to comment down below. Let me know what your favorite episode of Bad Batch is so far. Who do you think the sisters was talking to at the end? I have my predictions, and I'll share them just in a bit. And, of course, make sure to comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on the Bad Batch so far. Again, if you haven't watched my other reviews, I've overall really enjoyed this show so far. You know, it very much feels like a sequel series to Clone Wars, filling in those little gaps, doing little missions, and going here to here. I would like to see a more cohesive arc every three or four, but since it is the same characters, I understand why we are doing it in the way that we are. And for me, it's fun. It kind of feels like I'm playing a video game in a sense, like the Republic Commando game, if you guys remember that back in the day, which was a freaking awesome blast. It's actually on the Nintendo switch in the playstation 4 now and if you haven't played it yet you really should it's a nice little throwback of a video game they made back in the day for star wars where you play as like commando troops for the clones i'm getting off topic but really much this was again kind of like last week's episode here's your mission you're gonna get paid you have no other reason to work for it i can protect your back and it's of course sid telling them this which i kind of like sid being their like little not mentor but like hey I'm your sign in your missions. I get paid, you get paid, you're safe in the end of the day. And it's all for fall fun. And that's what Bad Batch contains itself to be. It is just fun. Now, one of my favorite things about this episode was, again, when they got to the mission. And something that I've really just aesthetically really realized through some of these darker episodes that have a little bit of a darker tone is the animation, again, completely blows me away. And every episode so far has had excellent animation, but in this one in particular, the dense underling of this factory destroying all these droids had this sense of dread and destruction from kind of just destroying the prequel droids in the sense was kind of sad to me because I love the droids. I think they're really cool characters and cool, unique things to the world. And the animation in there just felt, again, that dread, and the lighting just worked so well, but again, it adds and ramps up the tension, of course, when they are found out, and the security droids start to really much come into play, but one of the things that I did not expect was to see the two twin sisters from Clone Wars Season 7, the ones that helped out Ahsoka. I didn't expect to see them back in here. Maybe down the road, may, I was maybe expecting maybe in the Ahsoka live action show, but it was really cool to see those two pop up in here. And them going after the same exact thing that, of course, the Bad Batch are going after, which... Again, makes sense for why they would be. They're in the kind of the same department as the Bad Batch, but it was a fun, entertaining episode. One that had a lot of great action set pieces to it, and one that kept me very much engaged the entire way through. And Omega's becoming a foreman of her own. I like the little bow that she has, and I'm waiting. When is she going to get her own Bad Batch armor? When are they going to form that? She's going to be a cool little badass, and every week I start to like Omega more and more. I've never disliked her but she's really coming into her own as a character and a truly much a group of the Bad Batch. And I'm just loving these characters and their interactions with one another. And the action in here was great. Now, one of the characters that is having kind of a little bit of an issue is Wrecker. I saw some comments last week saying maybe his chip was activated when his head got hit. I hope not that's the reason. I hope there's just something more mentally going on in him. Maybe it is the chip trying to activate. I hope we get some details on that very much soon. But it seems like he does not like heights. I kind of relate to that. I hate heights as well. But again, he was the hero in the end of the day. And one of the biggest things, again, was the sisters coming back to play. And them having this nice intertwining banter with the Bad Batch themselves in an interaction. You completely forget that they never 
talk to them at all. Um, they very much had this cool idea and realization in Clone Wars of, in general, the whole entire war, and put a cool perspective on Ahsoka herself. And while I know they weren't received completely well, but since it was really much in a weird arc of where they were placed... I liked them for the most part, and I was glad and happy to see them pop up in here, and I think some people might feel the same way. Now, towards the end of the episode, of course, the droid head is destroyed, but it was really cool how they used that to bring to life the rest of the droids in there, and I like that the droids are like, did we win? Who are we fighting for? Oh, it's orders. Let's just do it, and they start firing back at the security droids, which there were a ton of them. I mean, you take out a bunch of them, another wave comes in, and it's even more than the last, and it gets quite wild in there. But, of course, the droid head does get destroyed on their way out. And as they're talking, as they're discussing, you know, they're asking, what are you guys doing it for? And the Bad Batch is like, well, we don't know who we're selling it for. We're just here to get the money. And they say, well, there are people out there who are trying to fight the Empire. And for me, when he gives them the rod, which I knew that rod had the, the data in there, and he hands it and he says, give it back to who you think should fight. It sat there and I was like, Okay, I love that because it, these two do feel like someone who would fight against the Empire, who would join the Rebellion. And I really, again, want to see more of these characters. And I do hope we get a lot more Bad Batch in the future. I hope it's just not a one and done season. Unless that's how the story was written, I do hope there's more adventures with them because I think this time period is so precious and unique. And it's something, again, that we've explored kinda and like fallen order and a little bit of solo but not enough to the point where i feel like this is some of the most important aspects of the star wars timeline that i think we really need to flesh out a little bit more and i'm wanting it and of course stuff before the prequels but that's another story for another time but of course by then they go on their separate paths they go on their separate ways and we catch up on the twins who call someone we see this kind of figurishly robed and from behind, in a quick image, you first think Darth Vader, obviously. Darth Vader, you see the black, you see the black cloak to the side. At least that's how I kind of thought about it. But then I thought about it. I'm like, there's no way they would work for Darth Vader. I don't care how much the job would be. There's no way they would do it. So I sat there and I'm like, well, who else have we seen in a cloak before who wears that kind of rope type stuff? Well, it's one person and that is Ahsoka Tano. Um, or, you know, yeah, no, I'm not even going to say anything else. It's Ahsoka Tano. Uh, that's who I feel like that would relate to them. I feel like that would fit perfectly in Ahsoka Tano's story. And that's where I feel like I'm going with this now is that Ahsoka Tano will be the person who is kind of starting to fight back a little bit from them and helping the rebellion in a sense. Um, so I do feel like that I think next week's episode or maybe a couple weeks from now, we will either see Rex, which I know we Rex has been confirmed because of the trailers, but I do think we will get Ahsoka very soon, which will be really cool to see how, how Ahsoka talks to the Bad Batch because I don't think she's ever actually interacted with the Bad Batch from my knowledge, and I think that would be really freaking cool, and I'm just excited to talk more Bad Batch very soon. So guys, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts. Have a safe Friday, guys. Have a safe weekend as well. And of course, until next time, Stay classy.